Welcome. In this video, I will teach you how to use nested loops in C++. For this video, we will use two for loops for our nested loops, but note that you can use any type of loop you want and nest it inside of another loop. So we are going to demonstrate today using or printing a square that looks just like this. I know this doesn't look like a square, because there's this extra space here because of just how Visual Studio Code shows the lines of code. But I still call it a square because there's five, five items across and then it goes five items down. So it is a five by five. So it's still a square to me. And to do this, we are going to need to print this square row by row. So, First, we'll print off this row, starting with this first pound sign, and then the second pound sign, the third pound sign, fourth and fifth pound signs. And then we will need to move to the next row, print off the first pound sign, then these three spaces in the middle, and then the final pound sign to create the edges. And then we'll do the same for the next two rows. And then lastly, we need to print this final row of pound signs to complete the square. So how can we do this? Well, we can use two nested for loops. So we have this outer for loop right here that encapsulates everything inside right here. And this outer for loop is going to keep track of what row we are currently working on. It starts at zero and it is going to go up to this size constant, which has been defined up here as an integer of equivalent to the number five. So we are going to make five rows right here, just like we want. We want one, two, three, four, five rows. And then we have this nested for loop right here, which is going to keep track of the columns that we are going to print that also runs from zero to, to four because four is less than size, and then when it hits five, it will break out of there. And this inner for loop is going to keep track of what column we are on. So when this i is zero, it will this j will iterate from zero to four, allowing us to print out all five of these, and then it will move on to i equaling to one, and then it will run this again from zero to five, allowing us to print out this row, and then this row, and then this row, and then this row. But let's look at inside of this nested for loop here a little bit deeper. So for our first and last row, we want to print that line. We want to print this line right here. And that's just going to be however big the size is, we want to print out those. We just want to print out pound signs. So we see here, if i is equal to zero, this i out here is keeping track of our row, or if it's equal to size minus one, so if it's on the fourth row or the zeroth row, it is gonna print out this line. It's just gonna print out a pound sign for each iteration of this inner loop. And then to print the middle rows, we have this else case, because here we have the first row, because the zeroth row will always be the first row. And then the size minus one row is the last row. And then every other row is going to be a middle row where we need to first print an edge. And we know if we want to print the edge, it is if J is zero, because here J is zero, J is zero, or J is zero and J is zero. And then when J is equal to size minus one, we also know we are at the end of that row. So that will print out these here. And then to print these middle spaces, we have when we're not at the beginning of the row or when we're not at the end of the row, then we are going to just print out a space. And then after each line here, because remember this is gonna print out one row right here in this nested for loop. Well, after that, we'll print an end line so that this isn't all printed on the same line like, like this. So we don't get something that looks like this. That is why we have this end line down here because we don't want it to look like this because that's not a square. We want it to look like that. 
So let us open up a terminal and we can compile this program with G++ and the name of the program, nested loops ex.cpp. And one second, I'm not in the right directory, desktop and CD week eight. And then now let's clear out this and try and compile that again. And you see it will compile. And when I run this program, you see I get a nice square output to the screen. Again, because this first row here, when we are here on our loop, the i is equal to zero. And then it comes into this or loop here, which prints the row. And since i is equal to zero, it will never go into this else case here. And it will just, every iteration of this inner for loop, it will print out that pound sign. And that is how we get that first row line right there. And then it comes around, increments this i up to one, and then comes into here since it's not equal to zero anymore or equal to size minus one, because in this case, our size is five. So if size minus one is four and our i is equal to one, then it is not going to do this if it is going to come into this else every single iteration of this for loop. And then since j is equal to zero at the beginning, it will print out this pound sign. It will loop through this again after that. Come back to here, iterate that j up to one. And then since j is not equal to zero or to size minus one, since size minus one is four and we're at one, it will print out a space, loop around, increment that j to two, print out a space, loop around, increment that j to three, print out a space, loop around, increment that j to four. And then since that j goes to four, that is equal to size minus one. So it prints out the end of the, the end pound sign. And then it comes back around, increments that j to five. Well, five is not less than five, so it breaks out of here, prints the new line. So we go to the next line and then does the same thing for the next line, the same thing for the next line. And then at the end, it prints out the final row of pound signs because this I gets incremented up to four. And then we know that when we come into here, we know that this I is equal to size minus one because size minus one is four. So every iteration of this inner for loop will print out this pound sign. So we get this last row and then it comes down here, prints out the end line and then comes up here, increments this I to five. And then five is not less than five, so it breaks out of here and then ends our program. So that is how you nest loops within other loops. Remember, you can always nest any control structure that we are learning about inside of another one. As you can see, we're nesting ifs, else's inside of this for loop. We're nesting if else's inside of this else case and we're nesting this loop inside of this loop. And also remember that you can nest any loop inside of any other loop. It does not have to be a for inside of a for or a while inside of while. You could put a while in a for or a for in a while or whatever you need to do to solve the problem at hand. And that is all that I have for you for this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.